Hi everyone, it's time to open up my June Book of the Month Club. I hope that you stick around and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to see you guys. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And if you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please take a second and hit that little red subscribe bell. I'd really love to have you come back and join us for future videos. Today we are doing the June Book of the Month Club. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you. Um, for the book, book of the Month Club, and I will have my link below. If you do use my link, your first book will be $5. I would get a free book for that. And then your next book, if you decide to stick with it, would be $14.99 a month. And you do get free books. People use your link. So I've got a couple of free books. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for using my link. And it's just a fun way to kind of expand your library, maybe check different genres that you normally wouldn't get, and just to get a new book every month. And some of them are like debut authors, brand new authors, repeat author authors. Um, yeah, so it's just really fun. So for the book of the month, they happen to pick like a couple of different genres every month and give you a couple of choices. Sometimes it's five, I think one month or a couple of months, it was seven. So you've got choices between thrillers, fantasy, romance, comedy, historical fictions, just really fun like that. So it's, it's just been exciting to do that. But anyway, and of course I got my little chin over here that says, that's what I do. I read books. I drink wine and I know things. So cheers everyone. I'm actually having from that drink easy because I don't know how really to say it. That flight, those little boxes that had the uh, bottles for the flights in there. So I'm having this Hut Hut. It's a California Cabernet Sauvignon. So cheers everyone. I hope you are having a great day. It's really good. It's nice and rich and smooth all right so first let's talk about the books that we didn't get and i've been getting into fantasy i'm almost finished with one right now and i'm enjoying it so much it's different than i ever thought i would get into reading but it's just kind of fun to go out of your comfort zone and check some things that you haven't done before so there were some fantasy books there were some thrillers in here that i was really exciting i went with a totally different genre that i've never done before so first Let's do the ones that I didn't get. So the first one, it's called, it's a fantasy book called The Stardust Thief. And it was by Chelsea Abdullah. So it's like a certain famous lamp. This novel will grant wishes for a perfect fantasy with dark magic and a dangerous quest. Neither here nor there, but long ago, Luli al Nazari is a midnight merchant a criminal who, with the help of her jinn bodyguard, hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp that has the power to revive the barren land at the cost of sacrificing all jinn. With no choice but to obey or to be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son to find the artifact. Aided by her bodyguard, who has secrets of his own, they must survive ghoul attacks, outwist wit a vengeful Jin queen, and confront a malicious killer from Luli's past. And in a world where story is reality, an illusion is truth. Luli will discover that everything, her enemy, her magic, even her own past, is not what it seems. And she must decide who she will become in this new reality. Alrighty, that sounds great, doesn't it? So this next one was a thriller. Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hilliard. And it's uh, caught in the paraparese's glow after her husband's murder. Paris Peralta quickly learns all that glitters is not gold. When Paris Peralta is arrested in her own bathroom, covered in blood, holding a straight razor, her celebrity husband 
dead in the bathtub behind her, she knows she'll be charged with murder. But as bad as this looks, it's not what worries her the most. With the unme unwanted media attention now surrounding her, it's only a matter of time before someone from her long-hidden past recognizes her and destroys the new life she's worked so hard to build, along with any chance of a future. 25 years earlier, Ruby Rays, known as the Ice Queen, was convicted of a similar murder and trial that riveted Canada in the early 90s. Rays knows whose Paris really is, and when she's unexpectedly released from prison, she threatens to expose all of Paris's secrets. Left with no other choice, Paris must finally confront the dark past she escaped once and for all. Because the only thing worse than a murder charge is two murder charges. Okay, next is a literary fiction called The Woman of Light. And it's an epic yet intimate story that shows three generations of women trying to make a life in the perilous 30s American West. There is one in every generation, a seer who keeps the stories, Luz Little Light Lopez, a tea leaf reader and laundress, is left to fend for herself and her older brother Diego, a snake charmer and factory worker, is run out of town by a violent white mob. As Luz navigates 1930s Denver on her own, she begins to have visions that transport her into an indigenous homeland in the nearby Lost Territory. Luz recollects her ancestors' origins, how her family flourished, and now how they're threatened. She bears witness to sinister forces that have devastated her people and their homelands for generations. In the end, it's up to Luz to save her family's stories from disappearing into oblivion. Written in Cali Fardo, Anstein's singular voice, the wildly entertaining and complex lives of the Lopez family fill the pages of this multi-generational Western saga. Woman of Light is a transfixing novel about survival, family secrets, and love filled with an unforgettable cast of characters, all of whom are just special, memorable, and as complicated as our beloved heroine, Luz. All right, the next one's got a long one. It's a historical fiction, and it's The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle by Jennifer Ryan. The quick take on this is uh, prepare to be inspired by this winning story of women challenging the expectations laid on them by society during World War II. After renowned fascist designer, Chrisetta Westcott loses both her home and her design house in the London Blitz. She has nowhere to go but the family manor house she fled decades ago, praying that her niece and nephew will be more hospitable than the brother had been. She arrives with nothing but the clothes she stands in at a loss of how to rebuild her business while staying in this quaint country village. Her niece, Violet Westcott is thrilled that her famous aunt is coming to stay. The village has been interminable, well, dull. It's been something dull with all the men off fighting. But just as Cressetta arrives, so does Violet's conscription letter. It couldn't have come at a worse time. How will she ever find a suitably aristocratic husband if she has to spend all her days wearing a frumpy uniform and doing war work. Meanwhile, the local vicar's daughter, Grace Carlyle, is trying in vain to repair her mother's gown, her only chance of a white wedding. When Crescenda Westcott appears at the Lowing Sewing Circle meeting, Grace asks for her help. But Crescenda has much more to teach the ladies than just simple sewing skills. Before long, Crescenda's spirit and ambition galvanize the village, the village group into action, and they find themselves mending wedding dresses, not only for local brides, but for brides across the country. And as the women dedicate themselves 
to helping others celebrate their love. They might even manage to find it for themselves. Next, it's another thriller, The Lies I Tell. This one sounded really, really good too. So the quick take is this twisty cat and mouse story will have you ripping through the pages to find out who the true con woman is. Did I tell you the title? This is The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. So it says, she's back. Meg Williams, Maggie Littleton, Melody Wilde, different names for the same person, depending on the town, depending on the job. She's a con artist who erases herself to become whoever you need her to be. A college student, a life coach, a real estate agent. Nothing about her is real. She slides alongside you and tells you exactly what you need to hear. And by the time she's done, you've likely lost everything. Cat Roberts has been waiting 10 years for this woman who upended her life in return. And now that she has, Cat is determined to be the one to expose her. But as the two women grow closer, Cat's long held assumptions begin to crumble, leaving Cat to wonder who Meg's target is. Alrighty, so now to the one that I chose. And this is uh, called the Contemporary Fiction, but it sounds different than anything I would ever have picked. So this is what this book looks like. It's called The Lifestyle by Taylor Hun. And it says, this provocative, fine, yeah, provocative novel asks a salacious question. Why settle for the one when you could swing for twice the fun? Alrighty, so Georgina Wagman has it all. A great marriage, a great job, at a prestigious law firm, firm, and great friends. She's living the life she's always wanted, and everything is perfect. Until, that is, until she walks in on her husband, Nathan, in a compromising position with a junior associate. Georgi Georgina has a moment of crisis, but divorce is not part of her five-year plan. So, she comes up with this idea to save her marriage and recapture the spark. She and Nathan are going to become swingers. And Georgina is going to embark on this venture alone. Though her friends Felix and Nora have their respective partners decide to tag along for the ride. They've got relationship woes of their own and that this winking lifestyle might just fix. Um, Georgina convinced Felix and Nora belong together is thrilled. What better place to reignite the romance between two people destined to be together than a swingers party. Her plan is foolproof until she runs across her college ex at the first party. When they reconnect, Georgina will find everything torn between her head and her heart. With her very happiness hanging in the balance. Like I said, that is not something I would normally gravitate for. It just sounded like it might be just something a little different. This ne next one, I've looked at it a few times and I passed it up, but I decided to go for it this time. And um, one of my favorite movies that I love to watch is Under the Tuscan Sun. And I read a book from Book of the Month Club about some sisters from Tuscany or something that was really, really good. Just kind of like the symbolism and the scenery that when they describe it and just, just, it just sounds romantic and things like that. So this is called One Italian Summer. It's a contemporary fiction by Rebecca Surley. So it's perfect vacation reading ingredients, sun-soaked beaches, silk dresses, copious pasta and wine, and your reincarnated mother. Alrighty, so doesn't this sound really good? So when Kathy's mother, well this part doesn't, sounds pretty sad. When Katie's mother dies, she is left reeling. Katie wasn't just Katie's mom, but her best friend and her first phone call. She had all the answers and now, when Katie needs her the most, she is gone. To make matters worse, their planned mother-daughter trip of a lifetime looms. Two weeks in Positano, the magical town. Carol spent the summers right before she met Katie's father. Katie has been waiting years for Carol to take her. And now she is faced with embarking on the venture, this adventure.
alone. But as soon as she steps foot on the Amalfi Coast, Katie begins to feel his, her mother's spirit. Buoyed beyond stunning waters, beautiful cliff sides, delightful residents, and of course, delectable food, Katie feels herself coming back to life. And then Carol appears, and in the flesh, healthy, sun-tanned, and 30 years old. Katie doesn't understand what is happening or how all she can focus on is that somehow, impossibly, she's gotten her mom back. Over the course of one Italian summer, Katie gets to know Carol not as her mother, but as a young woman before her. She is not exactly who Katie imagined she might be. However, and soon Katie must reconcile the mother who knew everything and the young woman who does not and the woman who does not yet have a clue. So anyway, it sounds really intriguing. And of course, I just love the romance of the Italian countryside and the pastas and the wine and the canals, Mediterranean. I'm going to take a quick break, get my voice back, and I will return. Alrighty, sorry about that. I'm back. So this book I have been thinking about since I passed it up, putting it in my box last month. I had to get it. I just had to. So it's The Hacienda by Isabel Canas, and it's a gothic fiction. Again, another genre that I usually don't lean to, but it just sounds like I need to read it. So last time I read the synopsis of this book, so what I'll do this time is read one of the reviews of this book, and that will just kind of make it a little bit more interesting if you remember what I read last month. So again, it's a gothic fiction, The Hacienda by Isabel Canas. What would you do if the house you just moved into turned out to be haunted? We're talking some properly gothic stuff. So why this reviewer loved it. In her author's note to the Hacienda, Isabel Carnes writes, it began basically because I'm afraid of the dark. And I mean, same as a child, I used to cower at the ways the pitch black room could transform an armchair into the silhouette of an intruder or convince me that the howling wind was in fact knuckles rapping on the window. Who among us hasn't at least once heard a creaky floorboard above us and thought for at least a moment that our house must be haunted? I know that is me growing up. I would wake up at night and see clothes that I'd put out on the chair before me, knowing that I would be able to pick them up and get dressed first thing in the morning, and I would look at it and think someone was staring at me and could not get back to sleep. Once my sister woke up in the middle of the night and I was awake staring at this chair, and when she got up to go to the bathroom, I thought she was a ghost and I screamed. I heard my father snoring. I thought for sure there was a lion in the house, and I just remember screaming and screaming. I, yeah, so yeah, I can, I can totally relate to that. Alrighty, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, well, the Hacienda's Beatrice can relate. After the violent loss of her father and home, Beatrice marries the wealthy Don Rodolfo Soloranzo in an attempt to right her family's fortune and secure a home of her own. But when she moves on, into her husband's estate, things go sideways. Visions of bloody clothes, unexplained noises, and rumors of what might really be have happened to her husband's first wife. Unsure who to trust, Beatrice turns to Andres, a young priest whose magical lineage may, might make him the only person who can save Beatrice from the dangers that lurk in this house. Kanyas really does capture what it's like to be afraid of the dark. The dread, the weary curiosity, the sense of being watched. I was drawn into Kanyas' Lucius prose and subsequently rooted at the edge of my seat as I feared the fate of Beatrice and Andres. At once a supernatural mystery, transporting historical novel, and a rich examination of family and class dynamics. This is a spectacular, de spectacular debut for anyone who's ever wondered about the things that go bump in the night. 
I know I have been thinking about this book and I'm reading this book now and I like I said I only get to read like a half hour night sometimes not even that long because once I decide okay I'm turning the computer off I'm turning the laptop off I've got the TV off I might have Alexa playing some soft jazz or something in the background I fall asleep before I've even got a few paragraphs done but I'm almost done with look but uh, yeah, I'll tell you later about it. It's a really good book. It's my first fantasy book. I am loving it. But I could not get this book out of my mind. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be my next one. So I'm so excited. But I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. And I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you so much. I'd love to hear what books you've chosen to read this month or if you've read any of the ones that I picked. No spoilers, but I would love to hear your thoughts on them. So anyway, take care everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun everyone. Love you guys till we see each other again. Bye-bye.